I have brand new information about my heritage. As we're all hunkered down in response to the COVID-19 crisis, uh, they have made some announcements to help you have some fun with your family research. Now this is ironic timing because I was already working on this episode and it's about the five things that you should know about my heritage and how it can help you with your family history. It is a tool that you can use right now. Now, whether you are currently using MyHeritage or not, uh, you should at least be aware of what it has to offer for you. Now, many of these tools are truly unique and some of them are brand new. So we're gonna be talking about those. Now, as I was working on this episode, I let MyHeritage know uh, what I was up to and they responded with, hello, the, we've got a brand new announcement coming out. So this is hot off the press. Here is what they had to say, and I quote, I am happy to share with you that we are giving everyone free and unlimited access to my heritage in color. That is a trademark thing, my heritage in color, uh, from March 23rd to April 23rd, 2020, uh, so that people everywhere can join in the fun and colorizing their black and white photographs. Ordinarily, only 10 photographs can be colorized by users who do not have the complete plan. But now you can colorize as many photographs as you'd like for free. Now they went on to say that over the coming month, uh, anyone who shares their colorized photographs on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram with the hashtag, the little hashtag symbol, color beats coronavirus blues and the tag at my heritage will enter a weekly drawing. So each week uh, it says we will uh, select one lucky winner who will receive a free my heritage complete subscription. So that is exciting news. Uh, so keep in mind the contest and also know that it's their contest, not mine. So if you have any questions, you'll be needing to ask my heritage. Well, good luck with the contest. As originally planned uh, for this episode, here are the demonstrations that I put together for you. They are, number one, the new colorization of photographs. This is a fun tool and a very easy tool to use. Just upload your photograph and watch the magic happen. This is a tool uh, that MyHeritage just made available for free on that one month uh, that we were talking about a moment ago. Now you can even download the colorized images or a comparison view of the black and white and color side by side. So be sure to check that out. The second item I have for you is the colorization of the fan chart and I'll show you how that works as well. The third item I have is how to upload a GEDCOM file uh, to MyHeritage and that will help you see the beautiful colorization of the new fan chart that they have. Fourth is how to disconnect relationships between two profiles. That is a personal thing for me because I made a mistake and somehow there's somebody in there that shouldn't be there. So I figured, well, as long as I'm fixing it, I'm gonna show you how to fix it too. Lastly, a brief overview of how the DNA Cousin Match tool works. Now they call this the theory of relativity and this, is a very cool tool, especially if you are stuck facing a brick wall. It might be something that can really help you out. Now you should know that this is not sponsored by MyHeritage. I am not being paid for this. All of the opinions in this episode are that of my own. All of that coming up in just a moment, but first, if you are new here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Now. Stay connected by subscribing somewhere on the screen there. Uh, there's a subscribe button you can click to subscribe to the channel. So, and don't forget to ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. There is a newsletter, a Facebook page, and uh, a website at genealogytv.org. Links for all of that information are in the description below this video on the YouTube channel. All right, here are the five things that you should know about my heritage right now. All right, one of the new features at MyHeritage uh, is really quite fun. Uh, and you can do this right the moment you log in to MyHeritage, at least right now, it's right here on the 
On the home page, you can upload a photograph. And as soon as you do, you can watch it uh, go from color to black and white. This feature is just remarkable. Um, I have found a couple little flaws with it, but for the most part, it is rather cool. So we're going to walk through that process right now. So the first thing you would do is click on this button uh, to upload your photograph. I'm going to take this photograph here. Now this photograph is in really bad shape, actually. It is from a newspaper article, and we're going to watch it uh, magically turn <laughs> to color. And look at that. Isn't that amazing? Now this photograph, these little white dots that are in here are part of the part of the effects from the newspaper article when I transferred it over. But still, with a really bad quality photograph, uh, I'm amazed at how how <laughs> pretty cool that is. Basically what it's doing is it's looking for face recognition and then applying um you know, facial color to the image. Now, this one looks pretty good. I've done some where the neck uh, is actually black and white and, and is not uh, colorized. Um, so you just kind of have to watch it. But, uh, you know, it does kind of kind of bring your folks to life. One of the other things you can do is just click on the color button, click on the black and white button, and watch it go back and forth. You have share buttons if you want to share it out to social media and uh, copy a link to your clipboard and share it to any other social media that may not be listed here. Also know that you can uh, download a copy of the photo here and this go to my photos is an album feature. Once you're in the album feature you can see uh, these little color icons where it has had the colorization applied to it. So let's take this one for example. I just think that is amazing. Even though the photo, you know, as a photographer, I'm always looking at the, the photographic quality. And if you look closely, you can see areas of her neck and parts of her arm, this guy's hand, where it has kind of faded off to a black and white or purplish color. His neck is a little, little wonky. But, um, you know, at a quick glance, it's kind of fun to play with just to see what, <laughs> your ancestors may have looked like in color. You know, one of the other things you can do while you're here is you can, you can just click through your album by hitting these little arrows and watching it go back and forth. Um, for a dingy old photograph, that's not half bad. And look, they even took his jeans and made them blue. At first, I thought they were only going to add facial color uh, skin tones to... Uh, the faces, but here we've got uh, blue jeans and a slight uh, greenish color. You know, they're still keeping a sepia tone look to it, but I think that's pretty cool. I have to hand it to them, especially for as, as fast as it works when you upload a photograph. This one had not been colorized. Let's see what happens. Wow. Look at that. Now, here it took a little bit of the sepia tone away and made the car black and white almost, but it did colorize the green grass, it added color to the faces, and kind of gave it a blue hint on the clothing. Um, you know, that's pretty cool. I have to say, I, you know, it does kind of bring to life that photograph a little bit as to what it may have looked like uh, somewhat. The day it was photographed. Very cool. Uh, kudos to My Heritage for that one. That that's pretty cool. Now one of the other new features at My Heritage is the family tree, the colorization of the family tree, the fan chart. I like to look at it in this view, in the in the horizontal view, um, and as you can see, it's you know your typical um, tree chart. But if we click on the fan chart, we can now see that uh, the fan chart is uh, colorized and in this particular case my tree is not very full uh, on my heritage I do not use my heritage as my primary uh, tree but I would like to see more of my ancestors in here so the next thing I'm going to do is upload a GEDCOM file to my heritage so that I can get a more robust tree so let's jump over there and do that right now 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to Ancestry.com for a moment and I'm going to download uh, my GEDCOM file from Ancestry and then upload it to my heritage. So over at Ancestry how you do that is you go into your tree. Now I'm in my tree and click on the title of your tree. You go to tree settings and if you scroll down you can see that you can export your tree. Export my family data as a GEDCOM file to your computer. Now, for those of you who have never done this before, it will not export your photos and it will not export your documents. It only exports the data. I'm just letting you know. So we hit export and it is generating a GEDCOM file as we speak. Okay, it is done. And now all I need to do is download the GEDCOM file. And you can do this from any family tree software. Now here it is in my little download folder. What I like to do is drag it to my desktop. That way I don't have to go hunting for it. So I'm just going to grab it. And I'm going to drag it over to my desktop. You can't see it because I have a second screen. I just dragged it over to. And now I'm going to go back over to uh, my heritage. I'm going to go back to the home page. By the way, you can upload a GEDCOM file even on a free account right from the home page. You can get started with the GEDCOM file and upload it there as well. Okay, so right from the home page what you can do is you can go to the family tree and hit import a GEDCOM file. Okay, so I'm going to go to my desktop where I had stored it and I'm going to grab that GEDCOM file and we hit open and then I'm going to say upload. Your GEDCOM was successfully uploaded and is currently being processed. You will receive an email once it is processed. Okay, for me it took about five seconds for that email to come in and tell me that my uh, GEDCOM file had been processed. So I'm now going to follow this link. You can access your new family tree by uh, using this link. And there it is. Lots of colors. Now one thing I can tell you though is that if you pick a person like let's say on this side of the of the tree chart currently they are colored blue but when you click on one of these little fans and pull that person into the center the colors will change for example if we look at this this line right here Nancy Wilson Will Winslow her mother is uh, Mary Hale and this whole line is blue, but watch what happens if I pull Nancy Watson Winslow into the center of the fan chart. Now Nancy Watson Winslow is, uh, all of her relatives before were blue and now they're color coded based on the new rewriting of the fan chart onto the screen. So everything to the right is going to be pink and everything in the middle is going to be orange to yellow, then green, and then to blue. So just keep in mind that those colors do not stick throughout your tree as you're moving around in the tree. I'll give you another example of that. If we take John Henley here, who is uh, kind of an orange color, and we pull him into the tree, but I'm going to guess that Jesse's going to turn blue and John's going to turn blue. Okay, so let's try this and see if my theory is correct. And here you go. So John is now here in the center. We've got Jesse and John is now blue, as I suspected, whereas they were orange before. So there's one other thing I want to point out, and that is, you know, we went and imported this tree from my GEDCOM file that I keep on Ancestry, which is awesome, but it created a second tree. So I just wanted to point that out, that here you can see your different trees, which leads me to my next point. If we go up here to my old tree, in my original tree that I had created on uh, my heritage, I noticed that there were there was a person that I didn't believe belonged in this relationship right here. So Jack Lee Conway is supposedly one uh, married to Wanda Zoe Baker. I don't remember putting her in there. Um, I'm not sure how that got there, but I want to show you now how to disconnect somebody that doesn't belong. So by clicking on her, we get to her little mini profile here on the side. If we click on more, you can remove the connection from this husband. So it says remove the connection from partner 
uh, Jack Lee Conway. And it says, if you want to specify that Wanda was actually divorced from this person, then you want to put a divorced event into the tree as opposed to removing, disconnecting completely. I'm going to go ahead and remove, disconnect completely. If I'm wrong, I will put her back in, but I'm pretty sure I don't believe she belongs there. So I'm going to hit OK. And now she's kind of floating out there. Her profile's still there, but she's still kind of floating out there in her tree by herself. So to get back to uh, my tree, now that we're back in uh, the tree, you can see that uh, Jack Lee Conway here is not married to a woman named Wanda, which I don't believe was uh, right in the first place. I can always put that information back in if I verify that that was correct. Um, so I believe this is right now, so I am going to move on. So the fifth and final thing that I wanted to talk about in this episode was uh, called the theory of relativity, and that has to do with DNA matches on my heritage. Now, we've talked about this uh, in the past, in, a, in previous episodes, and I can leave a link here uh, on the screen for that as well. But what I'm going to do, uh, due to privacy concerns, is grab an excerpt from the previous episode specific to the theory of uh, relativity. This is with uh, Daniel Horowitz, who is uh, one of the MyHeritage experts over there, and he's going to explain uh, the theory of relativity. But what it has to do with is uh, DNA matches. And so when you when you upload your DNA to MyHeritage, if you're new to genealogy and you're new to DNA research, the real gold in any DNA research that you do has to do with the cousin matches. And so the theory of relativity is taking the cousin matches, but it's also applying some magic. I'm going to let Daniel explain that uh, here in this clip right now. So um, I have clicked on DNA matches and now you can see uh, the list of people. And uh, the very first thing that you can see on the matches is that MyHeritage found a theory or various theories of family relativity. And this is one of our latest tool and probably the one that is causing uh, more happiness to the genealogies out there because finally, they will know how they may be related to their DNA matches. And, and again, please let me emphasize that this is just a theory. Now, again, as I said before, the theories are the hot subject of uh, the DNA. So let's jump automatically uh, and immediately to there. And this is the theory that my heritage found for uh, my DNA in a match with somebody called Brian Jansen. And there is a few things that you can do already from here before we move forward. First of all, by just clicking on this button, what my heritage did was just filter all your results by uh, the category if they have theory of family relativity. Uh, you could filter this by surnames, by place, uh, by tree details, and, and a message, if I can use your channel for everybody out there, uh, no matter where you are doing or, or what you are doing with your DNA test, please have it together with a family tree. A DNA test without a family tree, it's, I'm not going to say useless, uh, but definitely more difficult to analyze. Now, there are other things that you can use here to determine how you are related to Brian. My heritage detected that Brian is in a family tree with 385 people, and we have common last names. So in this case, both Singer and Cohen are names that appear in both family trees. Uh, we also have smart matches, which is even better. It means that individuals in Brian's family tree also appears in my family tree, and as well as uh, places. So Poland and Ukraine are also common places. Uh, and if I know my ancestors, maybe uh, that is how we are related. 
the first thing, uh, and you can see on the top that I am now comparing myself to Brian in detail. Uh, the first thing that my heritage will tell you is about the theory. And here again, my heritage found two theories uh, and demonstrated how he's my third cousin twice removed on his father's side. And I can view other theories right here. In both of them, he is my third cousin twice removed, but depending on how he is related to me, the theories will vary. Now, this will be enough for some people, but really going into the full theory and understanding how this chain was created is the magical part. And for this, please allow me to just jump into uh, a different uh, theory, uh, in this case, from my very good friend, Randy Sievers, um, and he allowed me to show his uh, theory. And the reason why I like more this, uh, this theory or his theory is because it explains exactly how the technology works. My heritage has Randy's family tree. My heritage has also other people's trees, and my heritage has 9.8 billion records. So we're using all that information to create connections between the trees or between the two individuals that did a DNA test. In this case, we go up on Randy's tree up to his great-great-grandmother, uh, I'm sorry, great-grandfather, who was found as a kid on a, a Canadian census. Thanks to the parents mentioned over there, I'm jumping to a family search tree, then go down to a genie, a genie tree. I could go also through users of my heritage trees until I get to his fourth cousin. So for a match that probably looked very distant and almost impossible to trace, here, my heritage is giving you a theory that every user should evaluate if it's correct, and it will depend on the information put in both in the records and in the trees. And, and you all will need to remember a famous rule like garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> garbage in, garbage out. So true, right? All right, be sure that you are analyzing all of the evidence, even in the theory of relativity, or how it might be related to you. Keep in mind the last segment was recorded several months ago, so it may have been updated, uh, the software may have been updated since the last time we recorded that episode, so you know it might look a little different, but the theory of relativity is still there. I just played with it, so I know it's there. All right, if you uh, would like to help support Genealogy TV, consider becoming a patron. There is a link in the show notes uh, below, but basically that's at patreon.com forward slash Genealogy TV. If you're interested in a subscription to my heritage, uh, I hope you'll consider using the affiliate link. That is in the description below this video on the YouTube channel as well. Now, to see the entire episode from that last segment uh, about DNA on my heritage, uh, there is a link uh, on the screen for you now, as well as in the description below. And well, I have also added a MyHeritage playlist for the other videos I've created. All right, it's time for you to subscribe, like, and share, and find your ancestors. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.